Hello, everybody, and welcome to Of Sense and Soul. This boys love visual novel came to me via recommendation from a comment on one of my videos. So, sir, madam, person, whoever you may be, thank you. Uh, I hope you see that I'm playing this. All I was told is that it's set in the Victorian era. I, I briefly read a little summary of what the game is about on the website, uh, but we have no idea what's going on. The demo is only meant to be like around 20 minutes long, so this should be a one and done. Let's just hop in. Now then, let's see how we might go about setting the scene. Yesterday evening, a quiet neighborhood was shocked by scandalous reports that one of its residents was engaged in a most surprising endeavor. Residents were left to question whether they truly understood their fellow man at all. There, even these ordinary little scandals can have a bit of the literary in them, if one knows where to look. Okay, well, hello, sir. You have a strong nose. We love that. Um, <laughs> um, if y'all don't know, by the way, I love Ganondorf, you know, from Legend of Zelda. He has a really big, pointed nose. It's like a strong, firm nose. I think it's like kind of low-key his hottest feature. So I look for that in other uh, fictional male characters. Ha, well... That's what sells the papers, isn't it? We can't all have literary aspirations, can we? No, not all of us can be Mr. Brooks. Any more of him in this place would turn bohemian overnight. Isn't that so, Mr. Brooks? Eyewitness reported that Miss Carstairs' account was... Okay, but who's Mr. Hammond and who's the other one? I am so confused. Is, is Mr. Hammond the one with his mouth open? Mr. Brooks? In the interest of the preserving the public decency. Brooks, we at the Daily Creed can only caution our readerships in so far as... Brooks, lost in the page again. Hey? Oh, okay. All right, well, everyone here is a no. I'm, I'm, I, I think that one guy has a nice nose. That's about it. That's where the praise stops. These, these are. This is just not my type. This is just not my type. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Were you saying something? Oh, you've just proved my point, Brooks. That's all. Well, I'd best be getting home. My wife will be wondering where I've been after so long. Have a good evening, boys. And Mr. Brooks, try not to get so drawn in that you forget to go home yourself. Don't you worry about me. I'll be along shortly. I just wanted to finish this article, and then... Ah, he's left. In fact, most of my other co-workers have too. Not unusual for Saturday, but... Surely the rest of the article can wait until Monday. Away home for the evening, then, I suppose. If I leave now, I can even stop by the library on my way. I depart from an almost empty office with a book tucked under my arm. Oh! Uh, one thing on the website they did mention is that this is a game you can play, I think, from two different perspectives. Like, there's two different main characters. I think that was my understanding of it. Like, we have Hugo and then someone else. The demo only lets you play as Hugo. So. It is the 24th of April, 1875, and Hugo Brooks is on his way home from work through the streets of London on a Saturday evening. Well, okay, let's let's talk about the game so far. Presentation, spot on. I think they have the Victorian aesthetic down to a T. And uh, the portraits, I'm not seeing any proportion issues. Shading's on point. Like, the art is lovely, gal. What a day. And I'm sure Monday will be just as tiring. We are working to a deadline, after all. That's odd. Someone has left a newspaper out. Could it have been Mrs. Wright? That's unlike her. And how strange. Isn't it the normal paper? Instead, it's... Sorry, it isn't. Oop. The... Uh-oh. Come on, new word. The m matrimonial news? Is it about, like, the matron? <laughs> Seeking the acquaintance of a most attractive young lady 
Heavens! I can't imagine how... Or who... Who reads these sort of things anyway? Oh, okay, well... I'm not really shocked you have that type of opinion, considering the era you're from. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, I'm not, I never read question mark dialogue. That's a rule of thumb on this channel. Until I can assign a voice to them, I don't read their dialogue, so... Oop. Okay, hello, queen. Nice croissant you have on your hair. Camilla, you startled me. Hello, cousin. I hope it isn't too much trouble that I've stopped by unannounced. No, not in the least. You know I'm always glad to see you. And I you. Besides, I felt awful to not have been to see you on your birthday. I thought I should have at least come by now and make sure the festivities weren't wild enough to overwhelm you. I laugh. Festivities? <laughs> I had a quiet night in, but thank you for thinking of me. And for the lovely gift. It looks like it must have taken you ages. I can't imagine the work that goes into embroidery like this. No, I'm sure most men will find it well beyond them. But I worry that you spent the day alone. Surely your colleagues at the Creed must have at least come by to wish you well. Oh, I'm sure most of them hadn't the slightest idea that it was my birthday at all. And really, Camilla, you know I don't mind. I liked the quiet. There's nothing I like better, in fact, than a peaceful night at home with my books to keep me company. Other than a visit from your favorite cousin, I'm sure. Oh, of course. She laughs. Wow, okay. They mentioned on the website that this is a slice of life visual novel, and I'm definitely getting that vibe. I mean, as much as you can have a good slice of life when you're really high in the totem pole in the Victorian era. <laughs> I'm only teasing, Hugo. The whole family made peace with coming to your reading long ago. But I suppose this is why I'm here in part. Of course, I wanted to wish you well, but as part of that, I wanted to come by to express a little gentle familial concern. Concern? Concern over what? Well, my dear Hugo, I can't imagine it's comfortable for you out here all alone. Do you really mean to be a lodger for the rest of your life? What? I only mean, well, I suppose your mother nominated me, seeing as you and I were always closest to one another out of all of the cousins, to come and press you gently on the subject of marriage. What? Oh, don't like it. act like it's such a ridiculous idea. You're nearly 30, Hugo. It's well past time you should start to think of these things. Oh, girl, we're serving real aggressive over here. I mean, there are still, of course, plenty of places in the world where they're all like, you've got to be married by a certain age, but there are also plenty of places that aren't like that. <laughs> what is she talking about? My life is perfectly wonderful. There is nothing to be concerned with in the least. Human. I have human contact. I have my colleagues and Mrs. Wright and, well, you come and visit me sometimes. But you just said your colleagues don't know you particularly well. And if that's the sum total of your list of friends and loved ones, you've made me more concerned, dear cousin, not less. Oh, don't look at me like that. I haven't come to drag you directly to the altar now. I just thought, well, your mother thought, and I agree, that a small reminder that you aren't getting any younger wouldn't go amiss. I'm not altogether sure about the look on my face, but I'm certain it isn't pleasant. Chin up. It's not so bad as if you'd been born a lady. You would have started getting these sorts of well-meaning visits a decade ago at least. Yes. Yes, that's true. You know, to be white and male in these times. Oof, lord. White, male, and rich. Come on. <laughs> I was gonna say it's the secret to success, but it was not a fucking secret. Like, that's just well-known knowledge, right? And I suppose it was you who brought in that newspaper? Clever as always, yes. Of course, I'd be more than willing to introduce you to some fine young ladies I know, but... Knowing you, I thought a written introduction might be a little easier for you to stomach. So, are we basically playing a some, like, repressed homo? Um, that's okay. That's okay. I feel like the last few demos, we had such openly gay dudes. Why not? Why not play as a closeted guy? You know, do something different. <laughs> well, maybe he's he's only closeted to everyone else. Maybe he's out to, to himself. Whichever tactic ends up working is the most effective one, after all. It does sound at least a little less daunting than being introduced in person. 
though I'm still not certain I see the point of this at all. You know, this is making me think. So, uh, tangent. I know I always go on tangents in these damn demo LPs, but my so my favorite game of all time is Medieval. It had a sequel, Medieval 2, which was set in the Victorian era. Um, and if I'm being honest, when I was younger, I didn't really play a lot of historical games, you know, games that had a nod to, especially to this time period. So Medieval 2 was really my proper piece uh, of, of that cake, so to speak. And I love it. This is actually making me want to play Medieval 2. It's actually Medieval 2's 20th uh, year anniversary this year. It was a few months ago. I considered making a video for it, but I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I don't feel like I'm in the mood to do a Medieval 2 video. <laughs> and considering back then I was in the middle of being bogged down by uh, Camp Buddy, you know, whatever. But Medieval 2, underrated, underappreciated. Play her, especially if you liked Medieval. Medieval had a remake last year. More people should check out Medieval 2. God damn it. Spread the word. <laughs> Though I'm not certain I see the point at all of this. I'm not the eldest son. I don't need to carry on the family name. Nathaniel has that well in hand, I'm sure. No, but marriage is still a beautiful thing. Companionship, if not romance, is a beautiful thing, Hugo. Just promise me you'll at least give the paper a look, all right? Have a read over it and see if you can find even a single young lady in there who strikes your fancy. Well, only because it's you, Camilla. All right. I promise. And I'm sure that's why your mother sent me, instead of anyone else. All right, good. Well, with that settled, I had better get getting on. Won't you stay for tea? No, no, I want it at home. And uh, what, what was that kind of random leprechaun accent? I want it at home. Like, <laughs> what? Uh, and I'll pass by your parents' house on the way. I'm sure your mother will be wanting an update. Hopefully my word will keep her mind at ease for a good long while and give you as much time as you need to determine a course of action. Just as long as there is a course of action. Thank you, Camilla. It was nice to see you, truly. Even if you came bearing this. You as well, dear cousin. Good night. And once again, I am left in the quiet alone. Well, alone save for the matrimonial news. It sits on the table, forebodingly. I can't believe she talked me into promising anything at all. What a ridiculous idea. This paper. As though anyone could fit their whole self into one little block of text, enough to get to know them. Bitch, I feel like, did someone make this? And they and they were like, their grinder profile wasn't getting hit up? <laughs> Maybe not necessarily grinder. I mean, they, it could be any uh, dating app, but... Come on, like, this is, this is, this feels a bit like a call out. Does it not? Does it not? I think it does. <sighs> as though any of it will be of any interest at all. I'm sure these are all from perfectly lovely ladies, but... I skim over the text. Maiden, 24, skillful in housework. Wow, honestly, that's... <laughs> Let me set that to my profile real quick. <laughs> and I suppose that is her most noteworthy quality. Affectionate little woman, 30, some means. Oh no, she appears to be from Dorset. That certainly wouldn't work. Wait, is that shade? A young lady, English, Protestant. All right, seeks engagement as companion to a lady. Of course she does. What a pack of nonsense. The whole idea was rubbish, right from the start. Well, at least I can tell Camilla tried. Sorry, at least I can tell Camilla I tried. Only one more, and then I can truthfully say I read through them all and found none of them interesting. Let's see. Seeking a gentleman of an artistic nature. I am a good fortune Wait, I am of good fortune and esteem and seek a companion with a mind and manner akin to my own. Address, post office, 56 Regent Street, St. James. Oh, I, not me reading it like that and the game gave me proper font. Well, I suppose poetry is among the highest forms of art, isn't it? I have to say, I truly didn't expect any of them to be quite so... I suppose it wouldn't hurt to respond, would it? Surely the lady won't write back, and then at least I can tell Camilla I've truly tried my best. 
No one could fault me for that. I'll just write her one letter, and that'll be all I hear for it, I'm sure. But what if she were to write back? I don't suppose I can risk that. Camilla and Mother can fuss all they like, but I'm perfectly happy, and I haven't the time to find a wife. Not if I ever wish to be taken seriously as a writer. Well, whatever I decide, I suppose I can wait. For now, I'd best find something to eat and try and get in a little writing before it gets too late. Oh my god, I thought the demo was over. I was like, well, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, I guess. I like the little intermission cards. Beyond Eden had them too. I thought they were nice. I really can't believe I'm doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, Camilla, if you weren't my favorite cousin, I dare say I... Well, I would be very put out with you right now. I sigh. Well, no use wasting any more time dithering. I put... Wait, I'll put it in... Wait, I'll put it in... Okay, let the... <laughs> Sorry, we all know where that sentence, where I thought it was going. I'll put it in with the morning post, and that will be the last I hear of it, I'm sure. After all, I'm certain that no sensible young lady would write back to me. Yes, we all love a big F-A-G. Actually, speaking of F-A-G, let's open a dialogue about that word. So I'd be saying that word um, sometimes in my LP videos and stuff because me and my gay friends, like, we call each other that. Like, it's jovial. It's the same way you might go to someone. Hey, bit. Oh, sorry, I just sneezed. That'll be edited out. Oh, God. Um, as I was saying, Jesus, that was an intense sneeze. Um... But yeah, I say that to my gay friends all the time. Like, we call each other that. The same way you go, like, hey, bitch, how you doing, bitch? Um, but I don't know if saying it often in videos they upload to YouTube is the best idea. Because uh, for still many people out there, it's a very hurtful word with a painful history. So I just don't know. I feel like naturally it'll still slip out. And it's okay. You know, I am an F-A-G. So to say F-A-G, like, oh, my God. But I don't want to normalize I guess, uttering the word, just to, I don't want to give people the wrong impression. <laughs> but yes, Hugo, Miss Miss Hugo is definitely one. Y'all can clock it from a mile away. Goodness, is it the time? I had better be in my way. I, I do still have that article to finish. God, that sneeze took me out. Morning, Mr. Brooks. You aren't home the other night after all, eh? Yes, good morning, Mr. Bentley. Are you sure it is a good morning, though? You're looking a little bit peaky there. Uh, of course, I, I am perfectly fine. Yes, thank you for your concern, but if you'll excuse me. Goodness, do I really look that poorly? Pull yourself together, Hugo. It was only one letter, and it's out of your hands now. Oh, dear. Oh, Lord. Um. Did you finish that article on the Carstairs business? Mr. Coulson, y yes, uh, that is, I'll have it for you in just a moment. I only had a few final thoughts. This is in the Oxford Press, Brooks. It just has to sell papers, not win any blasted awards. Get it to me now, or better yet, five minutes ago. Y yes, sir, of course. He's in a bit of a temper. I must not be the only one running up against the deadline for the upcoming edition. I'd better get to it. Another transition? Okay. All right. <laughs> this is giving me the ellipses from No Thank You. Like, <laughs> the way that game would just be like, dramatic scene, cut to dot, dot, dot. Mr. Brooks, there's a post for you. Time for the afternoon post already? For me? What? Oh. Oh, no. N no. Uh, I'm sorry. Nothing. I mean, thank you. I'll just thanks. She wrote back? More than that, even she wrote back right away? Oh, it's just a note from Camilla. Goodness, what's come over me? Of course it couldn't have been the woman from the advertisement. I gave her my home address for a turn, not my workplace. This whole affair has got me more twisted up than I'd like to admit, it seems. It's odd. I'm relieved, of course, but at the same time, I'm just the tiniest bit disappointed. See, Mr. Brooks? It was only a letter, after all. What? You were looking at it as though you thought it would bite your hand off. I would have thought a man as literary as you would be a little less afraid of the written word. 
Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm afraid I really must be getting back to work and... I suppose Camilla might have been right about one thing. It's possible I could stand to get to know my co-workers a little better. Thinking I'm afraid of a letter, honestly. When Mr. Hammond back to his own work, I can actually read Camilla's note. Dearest Hugo, let this letter serve as a bit of encouragement for you. I've been thinking of you since Saturday evening. It is never easy to step outside one's familiar social setting, and I know it is particularly hard for you. I wanted to be sure you knew that difficulty was recognized. Your mother is terribly pleased with you, I think. She was most relieved to hear last night that I had convinced you to try and reach out. You must know that the both of us think the world of you. We only want to see you happy. Now, with all of that affectionate nonsense out of the way, I will let you return to your work. Far be it from me to distract you for too long. Yours as ever, Camilla. It's always good to hear from her. And I do know that she means well. Oh, of course I know that. Mother, too. Whether or not there's a letter waiting for me at home from my mystery advert girl today or tomorrow or ever, that won't change. That's all well and good, and it's easy to say it, but I'd prefer not to feel so anxious about the whole thing. I suppose there's no sense in worrying, but that doesn't make it any easier not to worry. Brooks, have you finished your damned edits, man? Not man. That feels a little out of place for this dialogue type. <laughs> Whatever. That, on the other hand, helps more than it probably ought to. If I'm writing, I can't be worrying, can I? Uh, very nearly, Mr. Coulson. I'll just give me a few more moments. The rest of the afternoon passes without too much fuss. Focusing on work truly does make it easier to forget my worries, at least for the time being. And Mr. Coulson certainly doesn't complain. I worry that one of these days he'll combust while yelling at someone about a deadline. But not today, and not because of me. I get my final edited articles to him in more or less on time, and I'm on my way home before I know it. Really, I suppose I have been making an awful fuss over nothing. What a preposterous thing to be upset about. I'm sure I gave some poor girl a good laugh, at least. Besides, which... It is, after all, only one letter. I'm under no obligation to do anything more. And furthermore... God, okay, we get it, girl. You're trying to play the denial game. So really, there isn't any cause for dismay. I'm sure that everything will be... There's a letter on the table. Right on top of the Evening Times. It must have just come in the post. Perhaps I could just ignore it? No. No. <laughs> I'm being ridiculous. I'm being preposterous. I'm being... I had better just open the blessed thing. Okay, Mr. Brooks. Oh, goodness, here it goes. I was delighted to receive your response to my advertisement. You'll forgive me for saying so, I'm sure, but I found your letter positively charming. I should very much like to get the chance to get to know you more, without the barrier of the postal service in the way. <laughs> Perhaps we could meet for tea at a favorite establishment of mine this coming Saturday? It is on Bishopgate Street, and it serves a fine cup of tea, or coffee, if that is your preference. Please do ne let me know if that plan suits, and I shall eagerly await your reply. Yours, hopefully, um, S. Charkham? I don't know if you say that. Uh, th I don't think I said that name right. Heavens! I feel like I need to sit down. Well, she doesn't want to meet until Sunday, at least. That's nearly a week. So I've got time to decide. Yes, I've got time to think about it logically and reasonably, and I pause. I suppose I don't know what's stopping me. Miss Charkham seems perfectly lovely. Why, she said she thought I was charming. Me, of all people. I don't remember the last time anyone said something like that about me. I'm not sure anyone has, in fact. I wouldn't be so terrible just to go for... Wait, it wouldn't be so terrible just to go for tea, would it? Uh, what on earth am I so afraid of? I'll write her after dinner and put it in the morning post. Maybe the afternoon post? I'm not sure I should look too eager, but I'll write to her all the same, and that will be that. Camilla is going to be shocked when I tell her. I might have to stop by in person just to see the look on her face. But perhaps dinner first. It wouldn't do to write on an empty stomach, after all. That doesn't tend to end well. 
Okay, game, we get it. He's very nervous. <laughs> it's not that I'm avoiding the matter. I'm just taking time to consider it properly. Still, there's only so long I can delay. To be fair, I have... Not, not with the same issue, but... Um... I do get it. Like, when you're kind of, like, nervous about something, but you're trying to downplay it, but you're really just still fucking nervous and you can't downplay it. You know, I've been there. I've been there before. So it is, like, a very relatable feeling. I just feel like he won't stop talking about it. <laughs> All right. I'd better get this letter written now or I'm never going to. Oh, let's see. Yeah, the last one seems good. Oh, dear. I'm only now realizing that my hand may be a bit coarse for this application. I do hope she can tell that that's meant to be miss and not a tangled ball of string. Uh, let's see. That's, mm, that's a little forward. That one feels, I just don't like the ones where it's like, oh, one sentence. Most sincerely, Hugo E. Brooks. There! Thought I'd to do it. I hope. And I've certainly spent enough of my evening dithering over correspondence. I can worry about this again when it's closer to Saturday, I'm sure. Not another transition. Anyways. The only sense I'm getting is that this guy is a big worrywart. I might as well have not gone to work that Saturday at all, for all the work I managed to accomplish. And by the time I got home and prepared myself to meet the mysterious Miss Charcom, perhaps I should have gone to Camilla for advice. Perhaps it's still not too late to go ask her? Well, if I am going to go, I had better do it now. And it would be quite rude to not go miss meet Miss Charcom now that I've said I would. I'm being ridiculous, aren't I? She's just a person. I'm acting as though I were going to face my death, not meeting a charming young lady for tea. Stop acting like such a coward and just go, Hugo. Any minute now. Oh, honestly, sometimes I don't even know what to do with myself. The journey gives me some time to clear my head, at least. I don't quite know what to expect, and I think that's the most frightening thing. What does one do when meeting a stranger for tea? For that matter, what does one do when meeting a lady for tea? Asking Camilla for advice would have been a bit humiliating, but at least then I might have had some idea what I was walking into. Oh, I think this is it. This is a bit of a more polished establishment than the places I might normally go. The people inside are dressed quite fashionably. But it isn't as intimidating as I feared. Not as though I'm going to be dining with the Queen, after all. It's only tea. Well, at least I've made it here in one piece. Now I just need to find... Before I can start to even think about how to find Miss Charcom, someone speaks up from behind me. Oh, why, yes, I am, and who are you? I turned and suddenly find that all the words I could have possibly thought to say are quite gone from my head. Um, y'all really standing? Because I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, suddenly I miss Lawrence from Beyond Eden. Oh, goodness. What a striking figure, and quite well dressed. I'd wager that this fellow doesn't work at a newspaper. Bitch, where's Palethorn? I'ma need him to show up here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I... Um, I was gonna make him sound like Lawrence, but I'm pretty sure this guy is not French, so... <laughs> I apologize if I startled you. I just had to be sure I had found you. If you like, we might have a seat. I've already secured a table for us just over there. It is only now that I truly start to realize what is happening and who this strange man is. I I'm sorry, and I suppose you are Mr. Charcom? Oh. Oh, girl, what is this portrait art? All right, um, come on, big pig. <laughs> oh, I've rushed right past that, haven't I? Yes, I am. It is so wonderful to meet you properly. You're just as I imagined you to look from your letters. Well, at least one of us can say so, I suppose. I realize now that I must surely have misunderstood some part of our exchange. He certainly seems to have been expecting me, but 
not a young lady. I suppose I could always clear up the misunderstanding and leave, but... Well, for one thing, I'm already here. And after all the stress I put myself through to arrive to this restaurant, I should very much have a nice cup of tea to calm my nerves. But even beyond that, I must admit, I find that Mr. Charkham inspires great curiosity in me. Oh, a hunty is born. There is just something about him that I find fascinating, even after this brief moment of acquaintance. I find that I don't want to leave just yet, not until I've learned a little more about him. Still, how mortifying to have not realized all along that I was making arrangements to meet a man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll have to forgive. You see, I wasn't expecting... Hmm? You weren't expecting what? Ah, uh, nothing. I apologize, it's nothing. Uh, please forget I said anything. As you say, Mr. Brooks. Now, shall we? Uh, after you, sir. Mr. Charkham is about what I... Blah, 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 sorry, is not what I expected at all. And that only partially owes to his being a man. A gentleman, even by the looks of things. Though I suppose his general confidence matches well to the tone of his letters. He carries himself like a man with nothing to fear. I find him rather intriguing, I must admit. I can't help but wonder what else I might come to learn about him in time. Oh, girl. Um... Well, let's share some opinions. I think the setup is there. The bones of something solid is absolutely present. However, I think the demo could have shown more. They have said they are working on an extended demo for early 2021. And I think that will be the true showcase of what the game has to offer because there's just a little too just not enough just not enough here to really sell me on the game as i said before um the art well done i liked the backgrounds um uh, there was definitely a distinct style that of sense and soul had but uh yeah i just need to see more i just need to see more but uh, let me know what y'all think of this game. I mean, I thought it was fine. I think out of all the demos I've done recently, uh, it's probably just above Sensations, but not even that much because Sensations, while it has a lot of technical issues and I think it needs to be a little more exciting and enticing, it has really good UI, it's fully voice acted, like it just has uh, things above of Sense and Soul that I they're kind of I think they're not it's not even that of sense and soul is above sensations in my estimations it's just like they're neck and neck but I would give the edge to of sense and soul anyways so yeah I'm sure this is probably a very short video but you know it was fine it was enjoyable if you're wondering uh, I am planning to do a few more demos but I think eventually and sooner rather than later I'll do a full LP I just I've been enjoying this demo kick uh, but I've, I've also been kind of longing to have that LP feeling again. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cross the bridge eventually. But anyways, thanks to anyone who watched, as per usual. And hopefully I'll see you again in another video.